originally uh, websites like Twitter and Facebook were were places where people could connect online. Um, you could uh, connect with friends, share photos, share videos, information, websites that they liked, um, and it was all in real time. It was all um, it was all immediate communication. Um, and in fact, Twitter was originally designed as a sort of a text messaging service. You know, where mm-hmm. um, instead of sending you know, a, a text message to 10 friends, you could send one tweet. And if those 10 friends were following you, they'd all they'd all uh, get that tweet. Um, and uh, but since since uh, in the last couple of years, it's become far more public and, and especially Twitter. Facebook tends to be more private, but um, but certainly people have a much more public private presence on on Twitter. And uh, almost as a consequence of that, there, there, there are pitfalls to it. Um, a, a U.S. congressman, uh, he recently had to resign his position yes. after his emerged. So he, he, he shared lewd photographs on Twitter, and you know, the London, of course, there was the London riots, who were which were uh, in part organised um, organised on Twitter. Um, but there are positive sides to it to that as well. Now, Malachy, I know we said there originally it was set up as a as a text service to let our friends know what we're up to or to get in contact with people. How did it become involved in news? Well, it has grown um, dramatically since then. Social media has it's grown well beyond personal use, like governments, NGOs, activists, journalists. Many of these now have a professional presence on Facebook and Twitter and on other sites like YouTube. Um, people are uploading, um, uh, I think there's 35 hours of YouTube video is uploaded every minute. Um, so for many of these organizations, social media has become a form of pamphleteering, if you like, um, mm-hmm. except now, they can they can reach a much wider audience and their ability to communicate is always on. I feel like the internet is is always turned on, so um, it's it's it, and it's even more so now with advances in mobile technology. So so newsrooms are now using Twitter and Facebook to pick up on conversations that are happening online, breaking news, people at the scene of an accident or you know of. Um, uh, in the Middle East, a bomb explosion. And it is a wonderful out. tool in news. I know myself in the newsroom here in Midlands 103, regularly we follow all of the local politicians and like they put something up on Twitter and you give them a call straight away and it's it's a much faster way of working. Exactly, exactly. It's almost, you're almost, a, almost ahead of the news, if you like. Mm-hmm. Now, some people might be a little bit concerned about the reliability of the news that we see online and curation pops up every, again and again. What exactly is it and how does Storyful have a part to play there? Well, curation, there are three steps to curation. You know, there's discovering the content and most importantly, verifying that content. And, and for, for a, a website like Storyful and a business like Storyful, it's the delivery of that content. And if you think that there are over 150 million tweets sent every day, I mean, there's a tremendous amount of noise. Um, there's a tremendous uh, amount of gossip um, and untrustworthy information in mm-hmm. there. So in Storyful, we spend a, a lot of time choosing the people that that are connected to the stories. We find the communities who are talking to each other online, who find stuff first, uh, who who validate that, that information. And uh, we group these sources together into lists. So essentially, we would have a ticker for every country that or situation that we're following. So if there's a breaking story, we have a community at the ready that we can immediately tap into for that information. Um, and once we discover content, um, we use our systems to verify it. We have internal systems that we use to verify it, uh, apply journalistic skills. If we have questions, we often ask that community and we engage with that community to, to find out more where a video came from, who took it, when it was taken, what it shows. Um, and then we, we, we would content, uh, we would package that with context. So in a sense, it's, it's about combining social search with traditional journalism values. Now, speaking about traditional journalism, what about the future as far as social and traditional journalism? Like, for instance, can Midlands 103 justify sending, say, me to Emo to cover a farmer's protest if people that are at the protest can just as easily send it immediately to us in video or audio format on their laptops or their smartphones? Is it going to, is it going to change the way we work forever? Uh, I mean, social media is, is certainly, it's, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, uh, like the amount of people who are on Twitter, who are on Facebook, I mean, these are first-hand sources if they're verifiable um, at the scene. But, I mean, on top of that, you know, the value that a journalist brings on top of that is, is incal- incalculable. I mean, we can take a single piece of content, you know, a piece of video or photograph or something, and if a, if a journalist is there, 
um, they can add layers to that story and, 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 and then as a complete package, um, that in itself is, is invaluable. So I don't think, I don't see what we do as replacing traditional mm-hmm. journalism. I, I see the two working together. Um, and so you, you can have journalists providing a more sort of contextualised uh, uh, service, if you like. So now for Storyful at the moment, that's where you come in and provide the service and in a different way to the way people would receive news from Midlands 103 during the day, say. Yes, we do. Um, like if you came onto the Storyful site right now, I mean, you, you would see stories on American politics. I mean, uh, Yemen, Libya, our focus is, is mainly international um, and our client base are mainly in, international. So there, there are two sites. There's the, the public site, the Storyful, um, and those stories would contain tweets from verified sources, first-hand accounts of what's happening at a particular place, videos that somebody took, photos, um, and uh, context that we would add ourselves as journalists. And then on the business side of Storyful, that's behind the scenes. We, we again, are gathering videos, photos, and other information on breaking news stories. And once we're satisfied that it's genuine and trustworthy, we include that in a package that is sent out to our news clients um, uh, which are mainly uh, international news clients. Um, so these newsrooms then can take that content and package it into like a 60-second slot, news slot for the next news bulletin. Um, and, uh, and and they're confident that, that this information has been verified. Um, so in, in essence, we're a news agency for, for social media age or era. Um, and, and in between all of that, then we, we, would have, we, we do have partnerships with Google and YouTube, where mm-hmm. we create playlists of the biggest news stories of the day. So it's a it's a, a, a new initiative by YouTube called Citizen Tube, 